Their pledge is to the status quo, and today there is no status quo. For I, I stand here tonight facing west on what was once the lost frontier. From the lands that stretch 3,000 miles behind us, the pioneers gave up their safety, their comfort, and sometimes their lives to build our new west. They were not the captives of their own doubts, nor the prisoners of their own price tags. They were determined to make the new world strong and free, an example to the world, to overcome its hazards and its hardships, to conquer the enemies that threaten from within and out. Some would say that those struggles are all over, that all the horizons have been explored, that all the battles have been won, that there is no longer an American frontier. But I trust that no one in this assemblage would agree with that sentiment. For the problems are not all solved, and the battles are not all won. And we stand today on the edge of a new frontier, the frontier of the 1960s, the frontier of unknown opportunities and perils, the frontier of unfilled hopes and unfilled threats. Woodrow Wilson's new freedom promised our nation a new political and economic framework. Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal promised security and succor to those in need. But the new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises. It is a set of challenges. It sums up not what I intend to offer to the American people, but what I intend to ask of them. It appeals to their pride. It appeals to our pride, not our security. It holds out the promise of more sacrifice instead of more security. The new frontier is here, whether we seek it or not. Beyond that frontier are uncharted areas of science and space, unsolved problems of peace and war, unconquered province of ignorance and prejudice, unanswered questions of poverty and surplus. It would be easier to shrink from that new frontier, to look to the safe mediocrity of the past, to be loved by good intentions and high rhetoric, and those who prefer that cause should not vote for me or the Democratic Party. But I believe that the times require imagination and courage and perseverance. I'm asking each of you to be pioneers towards that new frontier. My call is to the young in heart, regardless of age, to the stout in spirit, regardless of party, to all who respond to the scriptural call, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For courage, not complacency, is our need today. Leadership, not salesmanship. And the only valid test of leadership is the ability to lead and lead vigorously. A tired nation, a tired nation, said David Lloyd George, is a Tory nation. And the United States today cannot afford to be either tired or Tory. There may be those who wish to hear more, more promises to this group or that, more harsh rhetoric about the men in the Kremlin as a substitute for policy, more assurances of a golden future where taxes are always low and the subsidies are always high. But my promises are in the platform that you have adopted. Our end will not be won by rhetoric, and we can have faith in the future only if we have faith in ourselves. For the harsh facts of the matter are that
that we stand at this frontier at a turning point of history. We must prove all over again to a watching world, as we sit on a most conspicuous stage, whether this nation, conceived as it is, with its freedom of choice, its breadth of opportunity, its range of alternatives, can compete with a single-minded advance of the communist system. Can a nation organized and governed such as ours do it? That is the real question. Have we the nerve and the will? Can we carry through in an age where we will witness not only new breakthroughs in weapons of destruction, but also a race for mastery of the sky and the rain, the ocean and the tide, the far side of space, and the inside of men's minds? That is the question of the new frontier. That is the choice that our nation must make. A choice that lies not merely between two men or two parties, but between the public interest and private comfort, between national greatness and national decline, between the fresh air of progress and the stale, dank atmosphere of normalcy, between dedication or mediocrity. All mankind waits upon our decision. A whole world looks to see what we shall do. And we cannot fail that trust, and we cannot fail to try.